So the first question I want to ask you is um, in terms of the language that's spoken among these different places, how do, have you noticed the language changing? And I guess in terms of, I'll, I'll put it like this way. Mm-hmm. When I went to Argentina a couple mm-hmm. of years ago, um, and I don't speak Spanish very well. I understand Spanish sometimes. It depends on the context, right? But I had no idea that the words that I had been using for certain things are completely different in Argentina than they would be in Colombia or in Mexico or you know in other in another Latin American country. So I guess what I'm asking is, as you've traveled, have you had to navigate those sort of differences between the ways that you communicate, the words that you use, and maybe, you know, gestures or any type of things that facilitate communication? Do Are they drastically different from country to country? Mm, they might be drastically different between block to block. Like I described the three blocks, and this is not something uh, academic, what I'm saying, I, I'm, I, I mean, I haven't, I'm not basing my opinion on some <laughs> academic paper I've read. I'm just trying to figure out my own hypothesis. Yes. So th- there is Mexico and the Central American bloc, the Caribbean bloc, the South American bloc, and Chile and Argentina. So uh, the differences might be more visible between the blocks in, in some ways, yeah, in mm-hmm. terms of the language. Yes, like um, there is a very popular TV show. Um, that is from Mexico and it was uh, started in, in the mid 70s or so. So every Latin American child has seen it. It's called, it's called El Chavo del Ocho, which depicts the story. You've probably seen it, right? Maybe, maybe I've seen it. <laughs> it's, it depicts the story of a poor um, eight year old boy who's actually, um, um, the, I mean, the, the, the character is a, a, a small boy, but the actor was already 45 years old when he played this character. So they live like um, in a um, poor, uh, I would call neighborhoods in this in the central part of Mexico City. And that show was so popular that we have adopted a lot of uh, inside jokes, language, and many, uh, I would say, uh, interesting things in all Latin American countries. So that, that, that's one thing that standardized many, many of us in many ways, right? So um, since there are 120 million speakers of Spanish in Mexico, I would say that's the largest variety of Spanish that most of us would understand. So if you go with, uh, if you learn Spanish and try and speak, Mexican Spanish will be understood everywhere. Hmm. But um, comparatively speaking, you know, uh, Chilean Spanish or Argentinian Spanish are different. So you might face some difficulties if you're not used to the rest of the varieties. Hmm. And uh, yes, there are some weird things. For example, there are like 20 different words for pen, depending on the country you're using the word, which is crazy, in my really? opinion. Yes, really. Like in Argentina, we call them birome or um, lapicera. In Chile, it's called lapis pasta. In Peru, it's called lapicero. In Ecuador, it's called esfero. And then every country has a different word for the same thing. Wow. <laughs> um, and it, it also happens with the pieces of clothing, you know, like, well, a camisa, like a shirt, is standard for most of the countries, but the word for t shirt varies. Like in, in Argentina, it's remera. In Chile, it's polera. In Peru, it's polo. And then in other countries, camiseta. And then uh, you, you will find many different terms. I don't really know why, but my guess is like uh, since many of the countries, well, all of the countries already had the, their native languages, um, I think um, the, there was a mixture of the Spanish term and the, the native influence. In, in many of the colloquial words, mm-hmm. you know, I can't, I can't think of English having like 20 different words for pen, for example, depending where you say it, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think there, there are some things I can think of in the U.S. that 
are regional and people say in different parts of, of the country, but right. um, not really something like, like one I can think of, um, mm-hmm. and you may have heard it in your travels is um, Hero. So in New York City, mm-hmm. we have the Hero Sandwich, right? It's a, Correct. it's a, for, for people listening, it's a long piece of bread and it has meat and cheese and veggies and it's a sandwich it's a sandwich it's maybe about like i don't know a foot long maybe maybe less than a foot depending on where you're going (laughs) but if you go a little bit further south to philadelphia from new york city they call them hoagies Mm -hmm. if you go to certain parts of pennsylvania they'll call them grinders if you go up north to, I think maybe in Boston, they call them grinders, but um, some parts of the country, they call them subs, like submarine sandwiches. So mm-hmm. that's just an example that I can think of, of because I, I love sandwiches. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, Coca-Cola or soda is another one. Like we call like right. Coca-Cola, we call it soda. Some people mm. call it pop. Some people call it some people call it Coke. Coke. They call it Coke. Even if it's Pepsi, they still call it Coke because right. it's they've just taken that name. So I, I mean, those mm-hmm. are just two examples I can think of. But I notice mm-hmm. in in Spanish and Latin America, like like you said, with the pen and mm-hmm. you know shirt, it, it changes a lot. 